This is a 2019 JL Wrangler Jeep provided to us by Neil G. of Northside Lethbridge Dodge. It was a snowy day, but there was nothing that was going to stop this Jeep from getting us to our destination. This new Wrangler is more aerodynamic with its rake-back windshield and new body design, which helps from getting those annoying rock chips. The new interior is plush with up-to-date technology like a large touchscreen with Apple CarPlay. And what I loved on this particularly cold day was the heated seats and heated steering wheel. The older I get, the more I need all of my body parts to stay warm. The new design interior and exterior combined with the new engine choices, one of them being the turbocharged four-cylinder, makes it easy to see why it's Motor Trend's SUV of the year. And I loved the ocean blue metallic color. Goes with my own metallic blue eyes. Our very special guest today is Renee Peterson, who is a nurse, a mother, a Woman of Distinction Award winner, and is probably most known for her Beauty Inside Academy. You will discover how passionate she is about empowering teen girls and young women to understand their worth and know that they are loved and valued. A beautiful Jeep and a beautiful woman. Doesn't get any better than that. I'm Mark Campbell. This is Cool Cars, Interesting People. Renee. Hey. Good to see you. Yeah. Like, like, so what, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> we decided we wanted to wait for the only day that it snowed in the winter know, time. So there, here it is. All okay. Right. I, what, this, what place is this, by the way? Well, this is Get Serious Fitness by Andrea Stewart. What and I have she? been yeah. coming here for yeah. eight years. Wow. And so love her. I yeah. do Pilates and boot camp. And okay. yeah. Well, let's it's do a real some, gem in our city. Let's do some boot camping out here. All right. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> good. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> Oh, cute. When you have stubby legs like I do. It's all good. You're doing great. <laughs> doing great. So you, so like you said, you've been coming, like working out uh, for a long time. Yeah, I have. This place. I love it. Yeah. yeah. That, how important is that in your life? Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've been doing important. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was an athlete growing up too, right? Were you? So physical fitness is really important to me. I, what, uh, what, uh, what were you, uh, I what were you big on? I played basketball. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was a basketball player. I actually even got recruited to play in the state. So I was a, a point Shut guard. Shut the front door. <laughs> I know. Who would have knew? Is that right? Did you, yeah. did you dunk? <laughs> oh, I didn't dunk, but I had a killer three-pointer. Did yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Wow, nice. <laughs> yeah, I really loved the game. So. And where did, you, where did you go in the States? Um, actually, down to Rick's BYU. I was yep. recruited down yep. there. And then uh, even after I'd been married and not played for a couple of years, I was recruited to go play at SAIT. So he, the coach had oh. recognized me. Really? Uh, yeah, from high school. He's like, hey, are you Renee Peterson? Come try out. So I did. I got offered, you know, a scholarship. But at the time, it just wasn't fitting for yeah. where I yeah. was at. So. Do you still try to play basketball anymore? Or is that... Um, no, not it's so kind of, much. I guess it's yeah. not a whole lot to do for, a, for, for, a, yeah. for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but I do have some good stories around it when my kids were little, for sure. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, well, here's one for you. Okay. There was... Um, are we being recorded? Yes, oh, yes, okay, this okay. is it. All yeah, right, this is it. Okay. This is it. <laughs> well, this is a great story. Is so, that, are sure yeah, you can tell yeah, us? Yeah, I know. Should I say this out loud? No, it's really cool. I'm really proud of it. So... <laughs> My daughters, we were um, out practicing, uh, playing around, swimming, saw some boys practicing basketball. So I said, girls, watch this. <laughs> so I went and I said, hey, you guys mind if I play? They were like, okay. So my two little girls, they were probably like eight and six or whatever, yeah. watching me. And I was just dunking or like shooting three pointers yeah. and playing. And finally the boys, they stopped the game, put the ball under their arm and they're like, who do you play for? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, best moment ever, right? So, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. So, yeah. That's very nice. And how mm -hmm. do you like this Jeep? By the way, this Jeep, uh, from what I understand, like this is sort of has become a symbol of women empowerment oh. with this Jeep. Huh, the how new, so? The new, the new thing. It's just these are the kind of vehicles that, that women... You know that they can really embrace, oh, okay. and and they that's really hmm. has become a thing. Well, I like which, it. Which yeah, goes... I mean the country girl in me really likes it for sure. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah, where so where are you? Where are you originally born? Where are you from? Well, originally? I was born in Lethbridge and grew up in Sterling. Okay. So yeah, just a small community from uh, just what would that be I, south of here? I guess. Yeah. Yes. So that's where yeah. that's where I welcomed in the new year. Uh, when Y2K was a thing. Oh, yes. so cool! Yeah. Yes, we. I was. I was playing. I was playing uh, in a band. Oh, 
Okay, and got we it. were singing, yeah, and and we didn't we didn't dis- disappear. Oh, I know. Wasn't good. that a crazy thing? It's like <laughs> we're all gonna be gone. The yeah. world's coming to an end. <laughs> <laughs> so you grew cool. up in Sterling then? Pretty I much? did. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Kindergarten through twelve. So. And yep. what was it like growing up in a small little place like Sterling? Oh goodness. You know, I would say there were so many good things about it, and then some things that weren't so good as you grow up and reflect. Right? It's yeah. so small. Everybody has an opinion about everybody or, (laughs) you know, something. But yet then the other part of it is like just that, you know, community and, you know, knowing that you had support and my dad was a teacher there. And so I loved, loved that. And did you, you did you sort of want to look at that life of of a teacher yourself? Was that kind of on the radar for you? You know, yeah, I guess growing up, my um, dad was a teacher. My mom was a nurse. So always something within that that area of education. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now you did, did become a nurse. I did. Yes. I got my degree in nursing. So I've been doing that now for, oh my goodness, 13 years, I think. So yeah. Did, and did you, where did you do your nursing? Here? I did here. Yeah, yeah. I did my four year degree. So yeah. you did two years at the college right. and then two years at the university. Nursing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And is there a specialty that you uh, got into? That well, you're into now? Well, at the time, like actually, even with the work I'm doing with my academy and young women today, I focused a lot of my research and academics at that time around, you know, young women and women's health and, you know, what keeps them emotionally, physically, spiritually aligned and healthy. And, you know, even as a third year nursing student, I had um, work published in an international nursing journal really? Good around for you. my research. Yeah, and I'd already. Um, you know, had lots of media attention and stuff around my work. But today I work with uh, in home care. Okay. So I do that and work with a geriatric population. And in that I do some palliative work, a lot of wounds and living options. And wow. yeah. So. And you still have time to work out. Yeah. <laughs> you have to calendar it. You, you have do. to make yes. it a priority. <laughs> That's very good. Yes. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go to Jabba the Hut. Okay, Are you I don't ready? think I've ever been here. Now is the time. All right. All right. <laughs> Stand by. Okay. Now we can turn that off. Okay, and we're good. All right. Okay, cool. Welcome to Jabba the Hut. First time. Yes. Cheers. Yes. All right. <laughs> No, I want to go back to uh, the earlier days Oops. where I first met you. Yes. Would have been Miss Teen Lethbridge. I don't know, it was... Yeah. Many, wow. last century. Oh, yeah, <laughs> last, last, that's scary. It actually was last century. <laughs> <laughs> what was, so, uh, talk about that experience because it kind of leads into... Thank you. Into, I mean, it, it was a beauty pageant for, I mean, that's what they mm-hmm. called it. But what you're doing now is is not a beauty pageant, but it is no. dealing with its beauty from the inside out. So we'll get into yeah. that. But how was that experience to do a something like a, like the traditional beauty pageant? Should I be really honest? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, I think it kind of laid the foundation for well, laid some inspiration for what I do today for yeah. sure. Because I mean, yes, it was lovely and fun to be taught about visual poise and posture and and you know manners and respect. But at the same time, to be really honest, there's a lot of superficialities sure. about it. Um, it was all about the external and, you know, and I really felt it was lacking some of those internal mentoring and yeah. pieces. And so, yeah, like it, it was fun. And as a yeah. young girl, when you're 16 and you're like, hi, I'm Renee Peterson, yeah. you know, and you learn some of those skills. Absolutely. They have served me really well. but. I just elements were missing for something that I'm more deeply passionate about for sure. I mean, yeah. I love to look good and feel good and the external I believe though is just a reflection of sure. who we are internally. So yeah. 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 Who who won that year? Do you remember? Did you oh. did you win you didn't win? Nope. Oh <laughs> uh, I can't that, remember I mean, Andrea or somebody or something. It, yeah. It just it, yeah. But yeah, so was that, so like you say, it was sort of an inspiration to get into doing what you're doing now. So for people who may not know what Beauty from the Inside is, yeah. explain it and, and maybe what was, this, what was the thing that said, I, I need to do this? For sure, for sure. Well, the name has changed. 
So okay. it's actually Beautiful Inside Academy. Okay. So what it really is and what inspired me is, I mean, yeah, my time in the Miss Teen Lethbridge pageant. I was also trained under the lady who trained the five Miss Texases who won the Miss USA pageant five years in a row. So yeah, I really? served on her faculty in Hawaii for a couple summers, did some work with her in San Francisco. <coughs> and what, um, as, a, as, a, as a what? As well, a, as, well, on her faculty, because she did work with women. And so oh. I kind of helped her. And then as a young girl just out of high school I was invited to her home oh wow yeah, it was How did just, you get that invitation? Well, I'd read one of her books, and I'd never done this before, but I was like, oh, I loved your book, You're Blessing Many Lives. And she reached out to me and said, oh, I'm inviting like 10 young women to come to my home. And so we were trained kind of under her in certain ways yeah. and, you know, got to go get our hair done and, you know, some of those fun things as well. So that was an inspiration. And, and then honestly, just my personal story married to my academics and just everything is just kind of woven together so beautifully to make me so insanely passionate <laughs> about the hearts of young women today and really empowering them to be have grace and confidence and really understand that beauty and being beautiful is something that is cultivated from within um, it's, it's what shines out of you and there's certain strategies and things by honoring yourself and I have a whole academy and a process and been doing this for over 12 years yeah. and did you ha ever yeah. have any idea how much response and how impactful it will ha would have become oh. I guess you always wanted it to be but it, yeah. it, you've got you've got the proof that it has been impactful and it has changed people's lives well absolutely yeah and super fun that I just ran into um, a young lady named Stacy that I taught 10 years ago yeah. and so if anyone's curious you should so go read her testimony on my <laughs> Instagram or my <laughs> Facebook because yeah. Um, she is the epitome of what I desire. You know, she just said that my work with her laid the foundation for, you know, the personal development and the growth and who she stepped in today. And I've ran into so many girls lately and they're just like, thank you, you changed my life. Or right. those things are what keep me going. I, I'm so passionate about this work. It's so needed today. You know, when I started 10 years ago or 12 years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, this is needed. But it is needed more today, 12 years later, yeah. than it was 10 years ago, to, you know, what or is, 12. I'm what getting, you, in, in terms of a, because of a, your, your kids are basically t mm -hmm. 12 to 16 or younger? 11 to 17. 11 to 17. So when you look at what kids are going through now, compared to say 11 years ago or nine years ago oh, yeah. when you were started, what, what do you see as some of the big obstacles Ooh. or the changes or, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking social media right off the top Absolutely. of my mind. Absolutely, so. 100%, yeah. bullying through social media, not knowing how to navigate through social media, not understanding boundaries around social media. Um, yeah, like that is super huge. The amount of anxiety and depression that young women are experiencing, and a lot of it is even masked. I mean, we have the girls that, you know, I don't like labels, but you know, the popular girls and yeah. moms are like, oh, my daughter's fine. And then I'm so curious when they're with me, they're not fine, yeah. right? Their foundation is like, well, I'm smart, I'm athletic, right? I'm whatever, and or there is that girl that presents as really struggling. So it's just a different presentation, but the pain that they're subject today yeah. is really the same. And also the other side to that, if we have a young lady that is the bully, that is that mean girl, that also speaks to her level of pain. Yeah. Because if one has to put down someone else or get into that comparison trap or, you know, stepping on someone else to make themselves feel better, that that's a whole nother level of pain that needs to be dealt with as well. So yeah, it's, it's a little frightening, the sexuality piece today, um, the pressures that young women um, feel. I, I, I'm, wow, we're in the 21st century, but still issues around boys and relationships and, you know, not understanding boundaries and self-respect around that. And it's ultimately, is, is it kind of been the same over the years, only it's just kind of more pronounced now in, in yeah, different ways? Absolutely. Yeah. The intensity of it. Yeah. Yeah, is a lot. So yeah. take us through when, is it, well, let's, because I just know what you're, you had programs, you had sessions. Yes. Are yeah. you still doing that sort of thing? Oh, absolutely. So, the yep. so take us through a uh, 14-year-old girl. All right, mom said I'm going to take this. Oh. All right, yeah. I'll take it. What, a, what, yeah. am, I, what am I up against? What, oh, what, yeah. Take us through that. 
Well, yeah, I think it's so, I love that type of girl in a way. <laughs> she's like, oh, what can you teach me, right? I'm only here for the food or, you know, whatever, right? Like, I don't, you Is can't tell food? me oh, nothing. There there's, right? there's snacks oh, okay. time. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I know it's really a beautiful thing because I think with young people and, and with moms too, I think today they're like, oh, mom, I'm fine. I don't need it or I don't want to go. And so then the mom's like, oh, okay, well, you don't have to. But what I encourage parents to do, because I believe that today we need to have our children rise, like that's our job. Like if we see them struggling to say, no, I know that this, whether it's me or whether it's someone else, but it's just like, you know, pushing them out of their comfort zones, you know, having them go and say, yeah, like stretch your wings. Like, come on, I know you're destined for more, right? Let's increase your capacity. And I mean, I'm a life coach, so it's really you know, cool for women and moms to go for coaching. Well, yeah, let's coach our adolescents. Like, let's get the foundation there so that a lot of that work is healed and they know how to cope before they're at that stage, right? Yeah. And so, anyway, so back to the girl. I get so passionate about this. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, so she comes and I think sometimes the wall's up, like, you know, what can you teach me or I'm okay because it is really hard for an adolescent to look or to go deep or right because their already identity is a little bit you know who am i and who's somebody to tell me and so i just walk them through that process and then they're like oh i like this this is empowering they start to feel the freedom and they start to like kind of relax more into their own skin because they're given tools and strategies to not be so impacted they can really learn how to unhook from the drama how I really teach them how to be the queen of their heart, how to take that position of queen, learn to rule their own emotions, right? Learn to be the ruler of their heart, to, to tune into that place and go, no, that's not good for me. But not only that, taking it a step further, further and helping them understand how to then take that next step to honor themselves, to have what's good for them, you know, be put in place and to align with that. And so it's kind of a magical process. You know, the first few weeks they're like, oh, and then, you know, they really settle in and start to see the benefits of it and the anxiety and the, the unhooking from the drama. And then they're like, oh, and at the end they're like, oh, I don't want this to end yeah. or I'm so glad I was wrong about right. this. <laughs> I imagine it becomes kind of a safe place for them too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you know, when I when I think about when I was going to school, the divorce rate, at least in my class, I think there was one guy whose parents were divorced. Right. You move that to now, and, yeah. and and that's prevalent. I would say it's a 50-50 split. Oh, yeah. So yeah. what kind of an impact does that have on what you're doing? Well, I think, surprisingly enough, uh, well, it's not even that surprising, but I guess sometimes I still get surprised that their pain around their parents' choices, the, dis the dissolving of those relationships, they feel like it's their fault, right? Sometimes it's their fault, or they don't know how to find their voice or to tell that other parent how they really feel. And so helping them do that, but helping them do that in a way with love, like to learn to lead with love and to be so empowered and strong that they don't have to lash out in ways, right, within these new relationships. and and just helping them navigate that and understand that adults make their own choices, right? And if a dad, you know, sometimes when there's a divorce and the girl, the daughter, doesn't see the dad or the daughter, or the dad gets, you know, in another relationship and doesn't pay as much attention, to help them really understand that that does not speak to their lack of value. Mm -hmm. That does not speak about anything about them. It actually speaks about that other parent, right? And so, but not blaming that other parent, not judging that other parent, but helping them look at it from a really emotionally inten uh, pers uh, intelligent perspective and saying, wow, dad doesn't know how to handle this, you know? And so maybe even giving her the tools and skills to navigate that or to set more boundaries because some of those relationships do right. become unhealthy. So it causes them a lot of stress. Sure. Yeah. You must have had some real emotional moments over the, the course of the years that you've done this where where someone came from here to such an incredible change. I imagine, Ooh. imagine yeah. that that hits home for you. I do, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing. I, I We have a graduation after every 12 weeks and yeah. um, it's probably been about a dozen times over the last, you know, 12 years that I've had a young lady, which I didn't know, but she would stand there and in her speech, she would say, you know, if I hadn't taken this course, I would have killed myself. Wow. And I'm like, well, yeah. like, I mean, the tears, right? It still makes me emotional yeah. because 
the level of pain and anxiety I think that we don't even aren't even aware of sometimes and I think what it boils down to though they're not given strategies on how to deal with it I mean the way the pain around other people's reactions to them other people's mean comments and when I help them see the truth of that it's they're more connected and they can then have compassion for that person, right? And even how to communicate better or set a boundary. And so it's a lack of not knowing how to cope with all of these situations that we're bombarded, they're, they're bombarded with, yeah. so. What's, what's, what's the one thing you really like? What is the biggest message you like to get to, to your kids? If there's one, one thing that, if, if they can learn one thing from, from your 12 week sessions. Ooh. What would you say that it would be? Well, I think with the whole metaphor of being the queen of your heart mm -hmm. is to really honor you, honor what is good for you, honor your own voice, honor your own truth, and that will keep you aligned with your, your destiny, your yeah. purpose, yeah. right? But when they get disconnected from this heart space, it's kind of dangerous ground, right. so really helping them yeah. stay really connected to that and find that voice. Yeah. Have their no be no and their yes be yes. Right. Mm -hmm. What about what about our political world that we're in right now? You know, the, the American side of it, or or what what how we're dealing with, like the Me Too movement and, and empowerment of women. Mm -hmm. We talked touched on that earlier. Yeah. Where where are you on that? How are we doing? Ooh, woo. <laughs> Speaking of passion. <laughs> Well, you know, I think it's really great that women are finding their voices and, you know, sticking up, you know, in those ways. But, oh, this is this is a tricky one. But I, I think we once again, the pendulum always swings, right? And so I also in my course want young women to understand, like, it's not about me versus him or it's like it's just basically learning respect, you know? And so it's not about girl power or you know there's these language around oh rebellious girls or you know that messes with their psychology and so it's not about putting a guy down so that you can be better or like well I told him or you know it's none of that I mean as yeah. a man is that gonna make you feel good is that yeah. gonna want honor in your relationships uh, it's not about bashing guys or bashing men like there's enough of that. And so, no, the approach is teaching them how to have respect within those male-female relationships. And if a young man or a man is not teaching them with respect, then they can learn to have a respectful voice to step away from it, right? Without engaging in all of, you want to talk about media, like all of the aggressive women today, and well, because I can throw an F-bomb -bom, F and I can say to you, right? Then that makes me strong and powerful. Mm, maybe I'm out, you know, whatever, going to offend some people, but I, I am not of that paradigm. Mm -hmm. It takes a strong, powerful woman to use her voice in love and truth, where mm -hmm. both are balanced, yeah. you know, so, no, they're really learning those skills, so. What about, yeah. talk, talk about your life, as you sit here and reflect on, on your, your life on earth here, and where My you've life gone. life on earth. <laughs> yeah. what, what, is, what has been most special to you? What what has sort of made you who you are? Wow. That's a, yeah, that's a, and we'll be back right after. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, just what, what sort of has just kind of been the thing, if there is? My daughters. Yeah. 100%. Nice. So, yeah, I was, I asked my husband to leave in two, 2000, and um, yeah, I, being a mom, and raising my daughters and knowing that they were looking to me and that I was going to, for them to rise to everything that I knew that I should be, that I could be. And so being their mother has been the greatest gift in my entire life. Wow. Yeah, and I, that could make me cry. Like I love them <laughs> with every part of me. And yeah, I think to be a mother is a privilege to be a woman today, to influence others for good, and to have that kind of impact on another human being. And I've always and said this lately, if anyone wants to know anything about Renee Peterson, then you should go have a chat with Brooklyn Peterson and Savannah Peterson. Those are your kids. Those are my daughters, because they will speak very loudly of who I am 
and right. what I'm all about. Right. And so, well, yeah, raising to who I knew I needed to be for them. Yeah, that must mm -hmm. be, and that must, and to know that they're such good humans, they're good amazing. citizens. amazing. Yeah, That's they are. They yeah. really are. And I'm not just saying that because they're my daughters, but yeah, yeah Fantastic. 100%. Yeah. Okay, how does, how does uh, if, if there's someone watching this, they, they want their daughter to get involved with your program, what's the best thing to do? When, and when, when's your next one coming up and all that? And, yeah. And that, this is ongoing too, right? It is, yeah, you okay. bet. I run my academy twice a year here okay. in Lethbridge and so um, I'm getting started again on Wednesday February 6th and then I'll do another one in September but honestly just talk to me like sure. phone me email me I love to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation to have that discovery call sure. to see if it's a fit because I really only want people that I know that I can serve well and so yeah it starts with that connection and reaching out to me um, I'm now also offering one-on-one -on -one coaching Great. so for girls ages 11 to 17 and then girls ages 18 to 25 and so I'm working with someone right now and that's a magical process so Very nice. I'm loving that how do they yeah. get a hold of you well you can call me 403-380-0607 uh, or on my website um, Gosh, what is my email? So just do Renee at, or Peterson Renee at hotmail.com. Okay. So, but then yeah. you, you also have your own website. Yeah, right? my own website. Yeah, is, it's um, beautifulinsideacademy.com. Good. good. So, we'll, we'll check that. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's a, uh, there, this is a fun question I like to ask people these days. Hey. What is a song in your life that was really significant that when you think of that song, it brings you back to an instant moment of your Ooh. life? Yeah, we're getting into the d real deep ones. You know, that song. Oh, I wish. Yeah. And it just, you know, you hear that song, you think, oh, I was doing this at that time, and that's I remember it so well. Well, I think, I wish I could remember who sang it. It's like. Sing it now. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't remember the name, but it was about being, it's like when I was going through my divorce, it was like fly or just, it was like, oh, yeah, like. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but yeah. it, I wish I could remember the name of it. But if I but were if to hear it, song, it would bam, it'd be it, like, yeah. oh yeah, like, yeah. I honored me and I knew what I needed to do. And yeah, it just gave me so much hope and courage. Yeah. And because music, I'm, I'm finding yeah. music is just that, it brings just all of the emotions in, yeah. into someone's life. Yeah, absolutely. Do, do you ever use it for your sessions? Is oh, absolutely yeah. we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we absolutely do. We use um, the song Gold by Brit Nicole. So okay. I really love that one. Um, Roar by Katy Perry. Oh, of course. So yeah, sure. we bring that into it. Yeah. Um, we use the song Forgiveness by Matthew West. Okay. Um, really helping the girls understand I knew one of four of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. But, but yeah, it's, it's good. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Who's the best three three point shooter in the NBA? Ooh, oh man. <laughs> you know, back in the time I would say it was like Michael Jordan, right? But even yeah. though I haven't kept up on it very much, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know. Well, that was my dream. I feel sad I never yeah. got to see an NBA no, no. NBA live well, game. Still, so still there is there's still time. time so okay. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Renee, it's been great. Thank you very much. Aw, thank you so much. Yes. Enjoy. <laughs> thank you very thank much. Thank you.